Hello and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian. I'm Sonia. And today we are going to be learning all about direct and indirect speech. So,、um, how are you, Sonia? Fine, thanks. And、yes. you? Good, thanks. Good. So,、um, tell me about you. What's your What's your job? Well, I'm I'm I work in the marketing department. Okay. Of a group of hotels. Okay. Okay. So I'm. Here in Tampa to work. Okay. And do you like your job? Yeah, I like it. Yes. And、um, what what are your hobbies? Well, I love go to the swimming pool.、Mm-hmm. Love swimming, of course. Okay. And、um, besides, I like playing paddle. Okay. Paddle, because you know, in English, paddle is the verb when you like, you know,、oh, in、really? a boat. Yeah. This、How、is paddling. How do you call it? Um, well, this sport doesn't exist. I don't think. Really? Yeah. It's like <laughs> mini mini tennis.、Right? I don't know. Yeah. Paddle is like tennis in a sport. Yeah, the the racket is different and the rules are different. Well, how do you how do you feel about、um, your reported speech? Do you feel confident or? Well, I think it's really difficult. Okay. And if it, you have to speak in with the reported speech, it's quite difficult for me. Okay. Well, hopefully um, after um, I explain to you the the differences, hopefully you'll feel more confident. Perfect.、Um, yeah. And then we'll then we'll practice after. Okay, good. Well, let's go and、uh, let's go and practice. Okay, so、um, today we're learning about the difference between direct and indirect speech, okay. or、um, uh, direct speech and reported speech. So we'll start with direct speech because、um, direct speech is very easy.、Um, direct speech is when we want to、uh, repeat exactly what the person said. Like、uh, word for word, uh, like uh, tell me something, anything.、Uh, my name is Sonia. Okay, good. My name is Sonia. Perfect. So now, if if I want to、um, tell somebody exactly what you said, then I would say、um, Sonia said. My name. <laughs> is Sonia? <laughs> okay. Now,、um, this 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 direct speech is more common, like in books. You know, when characters are talking in books or in plays,、um, maybe poetry. Or also, if I want to do an imitation of the person, like she said, <laughs> "My name is Sonia," for example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something like this.、Um, So you can see here we're putting the 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 reporting verb at the front,、yeah. and we're using a comma. Okay. Okay, but the comma is optional. But we could also put this this at the end. So we could say, "My name is Sonia." Sonia said, or she said, or whatever. Okay. Perfect. So we put this at the beginning or the end. And then we use quotation marks. Easy, no, no problems. The difference between direct and indirect speech is that with indirect, we repeat the idea of what the person said, but not exactly word for word. So、um, I can use my my own words, or、um, I can you know change it、um, depending on the situation. Okay, and it's a way to to give you the idea, without the exact words. So,、um, tell me something different. And can it be in any、uh, anything? Anything like、yeah. next week、okay. I will travel. Good. Next week I will travel. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So when we use indirect speech, there are、um, some things we have to change. Okay, two things really. So one of them is the verb, okay. So here we have、uh, the verb for the future, will travel,、mm-hmm. and also we have to change any、um, pronouns and any possessive adjectives like mine, yours, his, etc. So in this sentence we have we have two things we need to change. So we would say Sonia said. And here we have an optional that. Okay, so that is always is always optional. I could say Sonia said that,、mm, or Sonia said、mm, directly. Okay. 
And then um, we put the speech afterwards. She will travel. Okay? Okay. And you can see here that there are no quotation marks, no comma, nothing like this. Um, so this is an example of indirect speech. Okay. Would you put next week or not? Uh, yes, you could do. You could do. So in this case, um, I don't. Uh, you know, I'm repeating what I think is necessary. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you can repeat everything. Um, yeah. So now we're going to look more closely at at the rules for each um, each type of change. Maybe in your, your textbook, your English textbook, mm -hmm. or maybe your English teacher has told you that the rule for verb changes in reported speech is we have um, present or, 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 or future or whatever. We always change it to the past. Yeah. But the truth is that um, it, it's not that simple. Um, it's not complicated, but we have to, um, we cannot say, Always we put the verb in the past. We have to um, use our brain to decide um, what is the best way to, to change the verb. And, and this, is, this is not complicated, but also it gives us a lot of um, power to change the meaning of, of the sentence with one little word. Okay? So um, first let's look um, at if we have a reported speech in the past. Imagine that you say to me, I went to Paris uh, last, last week. Luck, lucky you. I <laughs> <Like> you like. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, in, in the textbook, they say, if it's the past, okay, yeah. then you can change it to um, uh, past perfect. Right? But it's not necessary. Okay? It's, it's not incorrect, but it's not necessary. I could say, Sonia said, she, so we have to change the pronoun, she went to Paris last week. Okay? So, okay. in this case, the sentence makes, makes perfect sense, and it's not necessary for me to change the past into the past perfect. Um, and in fact, this type of change is not really that common in English. <laughs> now, now, let's look at um, if you, you give me a sentence with the present tense. For example, if you say, my dad is in Paris. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, um, in this case, by, by changing the verb, we can decide um, whether something is, is true now or whether it's in the past. So, for example, you said this to me yesterday, right? Imagine. Yeah. Um, and today, when I, when I tell my friend, your dad is in Paris today as well. So I could say, Sonia said... My dad is in Paris. Her, Her dad. dad. Good. Her dad is in Paris. Because I know that your dad is in Paris now, okay? okay. But imagine if I tell my friend in two weeks, and your dad now is back in Spain. So now I would say, Sonia said, her dad was, good, was, in, Paris. was in Paris. So by, by changing just the verb, I can give you lots of information. Yeah. Yeah? So it's not always you know, past to present or, or past to past perfect. It depends. We have lots of flexibility. Um, and if I don't know if your dad is in Paris or not, if I'm not sure, then probably best to use the past, because this covers all, <laughs> all eventualities. What about things in English that we would say use the uh, stative verbs, which are verbs like things that don't change, like love and hate and, and like, verbs like this, you know, emotions and feelings, um, or things that are true. So what's your favorite food? I love meatballs. <laughs> I love meat. Me too. <laughs> I love meatballs. So in this case, right, um, something that you love, it generally doesn't change. Like, yeah. um, you know, it, it, from probably in five years, you will love meatballs. So in this case, it's probably more natural 
for me to say, Sonia said. She. Good. Loves. Good, exactly, loves. exactly. So I could, I could use the past. Okay, it's not incorrect, but since this is something which is true all the time, the the, the present is, is is sounds more natural. Yeah. What about if the the thing you're telling me is in the future? For example, you say, I will not, a negative, yes, <laughs> go to Paris. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Because, because, um, because uh, you have no money. <laughs> For example, I will not go to Paris. Um, so in this case, Again, it's like with, with your father in Paris, it depends if the event is in the future or not. So imagine, today you tell me, I will, I will not, not go. go to Paris. Good. And then tomorrow, um, I tell my friend yeah, um, that you will not go to Paris. So, what would I say? So, uh, Sonia. Sonia said. Said. See. Yeah. Will not. Go to Paris. Good. Go to. Very good. Perfect. Yes. This boom, boom, boom. Excellent. Okay. So in this case, we're not we're not changing the tense because it's still in the future. Yeah. Like um, for me, when I when I tell my friend. But now imagine I tell my friend in 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 two years, right? And all this this trip about Paris is woof long in the past. Now I'm rich. And now I you're rich. <laughs> so Sonia said. <laughs> See. Uh huh. Good then. Very good. Go to Paris. Very good. Exactly. So it's strange because will in the past in 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 direct speech is wouldn't. So will not would not. Would. Perfect. Exactly. So again, here we can, by changing the tense, we can give some extra information. What about if we use a conditional, like for example, I would love to go to Paris. Yes. So in this case, what do we do? If we want to, so Sonia said. She would love to go to Paris. Exactly. She would love to go to Paris. So we can we, we know in English that the, the conditional would has no conjugation, okay, yeah. because they're modal. So there's only one possibility. We have to do it like Perfect. this. Yeah? Easy. Easy. <laughs> now the the most complicated one. What if we use one of the, the core modals, like for example, uh, uh, I can't Go to Paris. Now, um, I would love to explain in, in, in 20 seconds what to do here, but actually it's more complicated because it depends on the modal verb. Can't, wo um, should, must, might, etc. It's more complicated, so you need to um, watch the class about modal verbs. Perfect. So that, that was all of the verb changes. So now we're going to look at the pronoun and possessive changes. So um, uh, give me a sentence that contains uh, a possessive. With any verb? Yeah, any verb. Any verb that contains a possessive like my or your or his or her. I like to play with my cousins. Very good. Perfect. Cousins. Excellent. Very good. Okay. So now um, we know that we must change pronouns and possessives. So I know that I need to change this. Yeah. And I need to change the verb. Maybe. Uh, here we have two verbs, but this is the second the verb. Possessive. The possessive here, exactly. So we have three things in this sentence we need to change. So um, let's, uh, let's do it. What would you say? Sonia said. Sonia said. She. Very good. So this one becomes she because it's not I. Yeah. Yeah, I is you. <laughs> Sonia said she. Likes. 
good. To play with her. Very good with her. Because they're not my cousins, they're your cousins, yes? With her cousins. Perfect. Perfect. And so I can see here that you, you use the um, the present simple because this is something which is probably yeah. true always. Depending on your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> What is the difference between say and tell? <laughs> good question. <laughs> a good question. Well, um, it depends, okay? So for, um, for direct speech, okay, told um, is not very common. Okay. Okay? Because in direct speech, with quotation marks, uh, tell is more for like orders and instructions. Yeah? But if we're using indirect speech, say and tell, about the same. Okay? So it depends. Um, but there are two ways to use say, okay? So the first way is we can have say plus the, 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 the text, yes, the, <laughs> the information. Um, and then we can have um, two object, okay? So this here, this is optional, okay? So the object would be the person or the thing that I am talking to. So the two ways are I can have say on its own, or I can have say with two objects. And it's very important that if I have an object, I use two. So I'll give you an example. So Sonia said she likes meatballs. <laughs> okay. So um, in this case, um, I'm not using an object. Sonia said. She likes meatballs, okay, with no object. If I use the object, I have to use two, okay? Sonia said to me she likes meatballs. So it's not correct to say Sonia said me. Sonia said to me. To me, always two. If you have the object, you must put the two, okay? Um, and we can, we can put this um, at the end of the quotation, or like here, we have this directly with said. But I could put this at the end as well. I could, said, I could say, Sonia said she likes meatballs to me. Really? Yeah, so I can separate these two things, but I can never separate the two and the object. Perfect. Okay. But, and I couldn't put this at the beginning. This sounds like Shakespeare. To me, Sonia <laughs> said she likes... No, no. Tell. The final one is tell. And tell is very easy because there's only one way to use tell. Okay? So we have tell and it's obligatory to have an object. Okay? Tell and then we have the speech. Okay? Okay. Um, now, I can put this uh, at the beginning or the end. Okay? Really? Yeah. Um, so I could say, for example... Um, um, Sonia told me hello, okay? Or I could say, hey, hello. Sonia told me, okay. Sonia told me, okay? Now I understand. But, but uh, like I said, um, if you use tell with, with direct speech, it's like for orders, like, um, do not, um, do not, um, I don't know, do not come in this classroom, the teacher told me, yeah. or um, Sonia told me a story, or, okay? So you can see it's obligatory for, for you to have an object. You cannot say, Sonia told, hello, or hello, Sonia told. Okay. So, say and tell are not the only reporting verbs in English. There are lots of other reporting verbs. For example, here you have nine other reporting verbs. And um, this can help you to, to um, give, give uh, an idea of how the person said something. Um, and, and it's very easy to substitute say or tell for one of these. And it helps you to give your, when you speak, it gives you more... Um, more, more variation and more, more flavor. Yeah. Yeah? So, for example, um, I won't eat any more pizza, he promised. 
<laughs> yeah? Or, um, um, don't forget to water the plants, he reminded me. Yeah? So it's a way, a very, very simple way for you to um, add some extra, some extra information yeah. to, your, to your speech. Um, and these have their own rules, like some of them you have to put an object and you have to put two, so um, you'll need to um, check out the internet and memorize the, uh, the combinations. So what do you think? Are you ready to uh, practice a little bit? With yeah, some? of course. Okay, cool. Okay, let's, um, let's go and practice. Okay, so now I have explained everything about reported speech, so we're going to play a little game. Okay, okay so I have here... Some, some funny quotations from some famous people, okay? So what you have to do is you have to change the verbs and the pronouns and the possessives and tell me what the famous person said, okay? So Taylor Swift, Taylor, we, I love Taylor Swift. She said, people haven't always been there for me, but music always has. So what did Taylor Swift say? Taylor Swift said, that people uh, haven't always been there for me, but music always has? Almost. Oh. Almost, because we have to change the verb um, haven't. Well, in this case, we don't, because it's yeah. something which is always true. But we also have to change the possessive me. Oh, really? Yeah? So try again. Taylor Swift said, people haven't always been there for her, Good. but music always has. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, Taylor. That was an inspirational <laughs> quote. Okay, the next one is, um, my fake plants died because I did not pretend to water them. So do you know what a fake plant is? Yeah. Artificial, plastic. Yeah. yeah. In China, you have a lot of <laughs> fake things. <laughs> so I know it. <laughs> So this is this is ridiculous because he's saying they died because he didn't pretend to to water them. Yeah. So what what did Mitch Hedberg say? Mitch Hedberg said that her fake plants. Almost, because Mitch is a man. Good. Poor him. <laughs> Sorry, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Hedberg said that his fake plants died because he didn't pretend to water them. Very nice. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, the next one is from Jim Carrey, the American comedian. Behind every great man is a woman rolling her eyes. Rolling her eyes is this. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> because normally they say, behind every great man is a great woman. Yeah. Yeah, but in this case... Um, Jim Carrey said that behind every great man is a woman rolling her eyes. Very good, very good. So, um, in this case, we're, we're not changing the verb is because it's something that's true in general. Okay. So, um, let's have a look at Groucho Marx. I refuse to join any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> <laughs> Groucho Marx says that uh, he refused Good. to join any club that would have him as a member. Very nice, <laughs> excellent, excellent, fantastic. Um, now here we have one with the present perfect, again from Groucho Marx. I have had a perfectly wonderful evening, but this wasn't it. Oh, this is a difficult one. Yes. Groucho Marx said, he had, he had, had Very a perfectly nice. wonderful evening, but this hadn't been it? Very nice. Very nice. This hadn't been it. That's fantastic. Um, but in this case, we have the, the adjective this. That. So that wasn't it. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, okay. Next one. Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> she said, I am a marvelous housekeeper. Every time I leave a man, I keep his house. Zsa <laughs> Zsa <laughs> Gabor. Zsa Zsa. Yeah, well, I don't know the, the, the pronunciation in, I think she's Russian, so I maybe it's like, z -z -z. I don't know, like I don't that. know. Gabor <laughs> said that she was a marvelous housekeeper. Mm -hmm. Every time she left a man, she kept his uh, wow. house. Wow, very nice. That was really good. You changed <laughs> all, of the, all of the pronouns and the verbs really good. Um, and finally, Mark Twain. The reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. 
Mark Twain said, the reports of his death had been greatly exaggerated. Very nice, very nice, excellent. <laughs> that was very difficult, but no problems for you. If you would like to see any more classes about grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, um, anything to do with English, then don't forget to subscribe to Kangaroo English. Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> Thanks, and um, I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.